to Six Figure Coaches with Luke Charlton, where every week we interview a successful coach and break down their business. We take you behind the scenes in their marketing, advertising, and sales campaigns. We show you what's working. We show you their frameworks, their proven strategies, so you can implement them in your business to grow. Now let's bring on this week's guest. Here is your host, Luke Charlton. Hey, this is Luke Charlton, and welcome back to the Six Figure Coaches Show. Very excited to have you here and very excited for our guest today. Actually, I'm super excited because, um, you know, I know that coaches love organic strategies. Anytime we talk about getting free, I mean, as you, for anyone that's listening, I've been in my community for a while, um, knows that I'm all about uh, paid advertising, training leads on autopilot, but there is definitely a place for organic strategy, particularly right at the beginning of your coaching business. Um, and I actually also focus on organic strategies as well, funnily enough, even though I do um, paid advertising, that's my key lead generator. However, organic is a great um, thing to add to your coaching business uh, to bring in those um, extra, re really high quality leads. That's one of the great things about, well, other than they're free, they're generally higher quality than, pay than paid advertising, although you don't generally get enough. However, so not get enough, get as much as paid advertising. However, the strategy that you're about to learn with today's guest is um, quite scalable and we'll get into his strategy in just one moment. I'll bring him on in just a second. Um, before I do, one thing to remember, we go, we premiere these, the, the, the Six Figure Coaches Show inside my private Facebook community called The Hermit Hole every single week. So if you want to get access to these episodes before they go into iTunes and Spotify and Stitcher, like all of the kind of audio platforms, then come to The Hermit Hole, which is thehermithole.com. And uh, that's a free group with all other free trainings that I provide in there to help you grow your coaching business. Okay, so that's thehermitholt.com. Now, with that being said, let me bring on today's guest. Now, um, he is very well known, as I said, in the organic space in terms of generating high quality organic and free leads with, um, you know, for your coaching business. And he's actually built a, uh, I know this because I was on his podcast and have, have done kind of joint ventures with him as well. He's built an organic list of thirty thousand, um, you know, professional, uh, yeah, service professionals on his list. And if you know anything about organic, thirty thousand is is quite a big list for an for a purely organic list. So he knows how to generate leads um, for free, and that's why I'm excited to bring him on. He's a best-selling author. Um, he's been doing this for for many many years. Uh, he helps specifically coaches, as I said, other service professionals. And um, he's also another Aussie that lives very uh, close by to me, uh, probably a couple of hours away, a little bit north on the Sunshine Coast. Very excited to have him on. Tom Poland, welcome to the Six Figure Coaches Show. How are you going, mate? G'day, Luke. It's a pleasure to be on a fellow Australian's show. Thanks for having <laughs> yeah. me. No worries. Excited to have you here. Now, before we get into your marketing and sales process, because I know a lot of the coaches would be uh, interested in that, uh, can you just uh, tell us a little bit about your story about how you got into um, uh, you know, helping other coaches and service professionals grow their business? Right. Well, it, I, I guess I was, you know, and it, to want of a better phrase, I was a victim of my own success. So I had, you know, 1995, I launched a uh, thing called the Entrepreneur Success Program and it went global. It was uh, basically a, a, it was a coaching business coaching program for, for small business owners. Yep. And yep. So we, we'd get a groups. I had at the one stage four mastermind groups. The biggest one was 149 members. The smallest one was about 32 members, I guess. And so they'd come together in their different groups. There's four of them, as I said, every 90 days. And we'd coach them for a day on marketing or on could have been meditation. It yep. was a very holistic program. So I ran that for many years, as I said, took it international and licensed it and so on. And the number one question I always used to get about the program was nothing to do with the program. It was, how are you marketing this? Because you're filling up workshops on a pretty regular yeah. basis. So I morphed from running that program to teaching how we marketed that program. Yeah. And that was the bridge that took me from, uh, you know, mar marketing a business curriculum development program essentially is what it was to marketing marketing. Yeah. So what I, what I, all I do now is I teach exactly what I do. So my yep. clients adopt exactly the same system that I, that I, that I developed. So that's yep. how I got into working with coaches because primarily the common denominator of our clients uh, ended up, I would say in excess of 80% of them had a service or an advisory based business. They were coaches, they were consultants, they were trainers. Yep. Um, so 
it was that sweet spot between who who our absolute ideal client was they got the most of what we did were the people who are marketing something that was invisible because that's what i was doing i didn't have a physical thing i was selling mm -hmm. and and the the other part of that intersection that sweet spot if you like was not just that they didn't have a physical product these are the people i was going to help but they um they wanted to know about lead gen so that yep. that's how i ended up and that's kind of like now. your whole, I mean, that's your whole kind of positioning and branding, isn't it? Like, like I mean, your website's called Leadology, right? So generating, yeah. generating, generating leads and um, specifically like organic leads. So let's, um, let's dive into your, into your marketing and sales process. Cause as you just said, like you, you do like you, you do teach um, similar to me, right? So I do daily email and I kind of teach daily email as well um, right. and running ads. Um, it's funny <laughs> when you see gurus out there, right? That don't actually, they teach one system, uh, but then they actually do something All right. different. All right. um, yeah, this anyways, is a bit weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's um, let's go into your into your. Yeah, I, I, I get I get all my. Let me show you how to get leads from LinkedIn. Um, yeah, and we can do a Facebook Live. We can yeah, do yeah, Facebook yeah, Live. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, yeah so let's go it's into your. Into your... That, there's still a bit of a disconnect. Sorry, what was that? No, I was gonna say let's go into your marketing sales because I'm a, like sure. uh, it's actually quite a quite a simple, um, uh, simple process. So can you just out outline the actual process? Then we'll kind of dive yeah, into yeah, big picture. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it, it, it look to describe it is reasonably simple, but let me preface it by saying that typically with lead generation you have one or two choices. One is it's it's organic, which means it's um, it's free of advertising cost, but it's slow and it's typically one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to trade shows, conferences, business meetings, handing out a business card, hoping to get lucky, so to speak, commercially, yep. I mean. Uh, and um, so there's that, or there's the scaled stuff, which is, you know, advertising, Facebook ads, LinkedIn, and so on and so on and so on. Yes. And and that can, you can automate that and you can drive volume. Yeah. Um, yep. Ours is kind of, in the middle there, we want mm. the scalability that comes with advertising or mass marketing. So we want yep. that volume, but we don't want to have to be going one on one and doing that. So so that's that sort of gives you the context for why the model. Now, let's go with the model. So to explain it simply, the model is this. I run one webinar a month. Yep. We have up to 10 people who have emailed us full of our ideal clients, which are coaches, consultants and trainers typically, yep. and they promote to their subscriber list, my webinar that I'm going to present. Yeah. I present the webinar, start, start my stuff, and the webinar is a demonstration of how my clients generate new clients in just one hour a month using webinars. So I'm teaching exactly what they're experiencing as an audience yeah. member. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but the important thing here is that it's one webinar a month, so it's an hour of my time, and we have multiple people with email subscriber lists who are promoting that in exchange yep. for me promoting their thing, whatever their thing is, a free book, a five hour challenge, a five day challenge, yep. I should say, or uh, the summit or a webinar. So it's, it's a process of reciprocation. And that means that our email list of some 30,000, as you mentioned, is used not to promote our stuff, hmm. that, but to promote our partners free stuff, which which is good quality. Yep. We, we, we do filter, we vet, we curate what our partners offer. If it's not a fit yep. by reason of lack of quality or lack of relevance, then we don't promote it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But this is a really important point, Luke, because a lot of people who are building an email list think that the purpose of that list is to market their stuff too. Mm -hmm. But you have you really have four opportunities a year to market your stuff every 90 days. If you market your stuff more than once every 90 days, people start really switching off and they go, yeah, you stuff is good, but it's, you know, I need to hear from something else. So if you think about your email list as not being the opportunity to market your stuff, but to market someone else's free high quality stuff, suddenly you've gone from marketing to one email list a year to marketing up to 50 email lists a year, not yeah. your email list, but your marketing partner's email list. Yeah. yeah. And, and, so you, you get to, that's where the scale comes in because now you're getting your offer, in this case, a webinar, or it could be a free book as a set of summit or whatever, but you're getting whatever it is at the top of your funnel, your free mm. content to get subscribers in, you're getting that offer in front of 50 different email lists a year instead of one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, super simple. So, so um, 
So let me ask you, I'm sure an objection that you get from a lot of, a lot of coaches who are wanting to implement this strategy, because it is very similar. Like you do a webinar, you know, all of your JV partners kind of promote you and then you would promote, obviously you do really reciprocal for that. How do you um, build, like, let's say you're a coach with an email list. I guess most, a lot of coaches say between 500 to a thousand. I would say most coaches have, that's the size of their email list. So I guess another way of saying that a coach with a small email list, how do you build JB partners if you've only got a small, do you actually need a big email list or like what, how do you address that, that, that question? Well, first and foremost, the most important thing is to start. You know, mm -hmm. we, and as I often say, because you get this question a lot, you know, I've, I've got a small email list. Why would someone want to do a swap with me? Because they're going right. to get like two registrants and so on. Um, what I say to everyone who asks that question is, look, we were all born naked. Mm -hmm. None of us were born with an email list. So at some point, you've got to start an email list. When I started uh, this strategy, I literally had eight email subscribers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. and the, the, so the way you grow is what I call the spiral. And, and first of all, there are equalization strategies. So if you were like me and you had eight email subscribers, you've got one choice is to start by doing reciprocal marketing promotions with other people that have small email lists. Yep. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how you can spiral up email list yep. size yep. with that strategy in a moment. Yep. But the, the way you can short circuit it in the short term is an equalization strategy is to offer affiliate commissions. Yep. Therefore, if someone's got a list of, you've got a list of 500 and someone's got a list of 5,000, you can say, well, look, let's do a two for two email promotion. I'll send two emails to promote your offer. You'll send two to promote mine, but I will pay you commissions on anyone who signs from your list to my product, but you don't yeah. need to do that in reverse. Yeah. yeah. So that's an equalization strategy. There are other equalization strategies such as if I've got the smaller list, I'll send four emails over two weeks to promote your thing. You just send one to promote yeah. mine. Yeah. These are equalization strategies. Anyone who is mature in the market and smart knows that the email list it should never be the primary determinant of whether it's a good idea to do a swap yeah, or JV. Right. Exactly it right. should be yeah. the quality of the content that's been given away. Yes. yes. Because yeah. if I'm going to email our email list, you know, of tens of thousands of subscribers with someone else's offer, I do not want emails from my subscribers saying that was crap. Yeah. Why yeah, did you inflict that on me? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so, so that's the, you know, there's a tip there. The, the, the big thing to make sure is that what, you, what you're offering is going to be quality content. Even if it's a one page blueprint, it's a, it's a really bloody good blueprint, you know, or a webinar, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Actually, that was the determining so, factor of us, right? When, when you came to me, um, when we did the, the swap of email promotions, my biggest thing wasn't like, oh, I, didn't, I actually didn't really care that your email list was like 30,000. My biggest thing is like, okay, what, is, what are you actually offering that's unique for my email list that they're going to benefit from. That was my first concern and you do organic right. stuff. And so I, that's why I was happy to promote because I don't do yeah. organic. So it was a good fit is what I so that, 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 That's a case in point. You know, it's you, you checked us out. You made sure it was going to be relevant to your subscribers and that it was, yeah. you know, passable quality uh, before <laughs> yeah. you, before you, we, we, you, you gave us the green light. Um, yeah. Let me on the, the spiral because this is a really important concept and this is really where the money is made. Yep. So the sequence is you, we can talk about how to identify partners and how to approach them and everything else, because that's really, really important. But it's, let's assume you've got the partnership happening and you do the swap and you promote this stuff and they promote your stuff. The world of joint ventures is like the wild west without the sheriffs. Mm. A stranger rides into town, shoots another stranger, rides off into the sunset. Nobody cares. They go and find another town and shoot someone. So it's, it's full of people who do no follow up who have yeah. very little quality control. They're just after the quick fix. I can tell you, uh, we've worked probably with 300 joint venture partners over the last two years. Yeah. And one of them reached out to me to book a debrief uh, before we did the swap. So yeah. our, our system is that we will, as soon as we book the dates for us to promote them, then promote us, I have an assistant and Clarissa will reach out and say, we need to get you booked in for the debrief. Once, once we've done the swap, we want to have a look at the numbers. Did we support you well? Did we do what we said we we're going to do and send the emails out? 
how many opt-ins did you get? How many conversions did you get? We want to know those numbers to make sure we've done a good job for you and vice versa. Yeah. Now that gives people a sense of accountability. They know that, that we're going to review the numbers. But the real benefit of doing the debrief is assuming that both parties were happy with the promotion, that's where you get to refer each other to three other partners. Now to start with, you yeah. may not be able to do that. You still start mm. because within 90 days, you'll be able to do that. Um, and so yeah. the debrief meeting is a debrief and refer meeting. We have a look at the numbers. How many attendees did you get? How many blah, 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 did we do everything? Everything's good, great. Here's three more people that will want to do the same thing with you, Luke, or mm. Jane, or Susan, or yeah. whoever. And they refer me to three people I don't know. And there are yep. thousands of these people out there. Not, yep, there are. Not, not dozens yeah. or hundreds. Yeah. And this is where the money is made. And this is where you spiral. Because if you have a list of 500 and you start doing the swaps with people who have lists of 500 email subscribers, when you get the three referrals at the debrief meeting, this is how the yeah. averages work out. One of those referrals, the potential new JV partner, will have a list that's smaller than the person you just did the swap with. So it'll be less than 500 in this instance. Yeah. One will have a list about the same and one will have the larger list. Yeah. You're going to yeah. be introduced to those three people. You're going to do a JV with probably at least two of them. And then you do the debrief system. And the one with the larger list introduces you to three people. Yeah. 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 One of which is the lower list in there. One of which is about the same type, one of the larger. And we just, yeah. Literally yesterday, I got introduced to someone with a list of 400,000. Now, I don't know what the quality yeah. is. Generally, the yeah. larger the list, the, yeah. the lower the response rate percentage wise, but it's still a. But, but this, remember, I started with a list of yeah. eight email subscribers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. We're now, you know, we're now we're in the 20, the 30, the 40, the 50, the 60, whatever thousand email subscribers. So you spiral up as your yeah. email list grows, you get referred to partners with larger lists. And so yeah. you, you go from whatever you've. But the important thing is to remember you're all born naked. No one is born with an email list. Yeah. Start. Yeah. MailChimp, eye contact, they'll they'll give you a free account for up to 2,000 subscribers. Just import existing clients, past clients, send them an email saying, hey, you're on an email list now. This is what you can expect. Please just click here to unsubscribe if you don't like the idea. Otherwise, we're going to send you some cool, cool free content from some of our partners. Yeah. yeah. And actually, another equalizer strategy that um, I don't know if you teach this, but Let's say someone has an email list of 10,000, you've got it uh, of 1,000. If they're concerned with the difference, even after you've said, look, I'll send more emails or whatever, you can say, look, just segment this, just take 1,000 emails out of your own list, right? You send right. email to 1,000 people on your list, I'll send to my 1,000. Yeah. And now you literally are just sending it to the exact same same number. So yeah. for those coaches listening in, I think that's a good one as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a good point. I remember Josh Turner, when we first started working with him, um, Link. He had a big list, mate, a small list. And he said, well, look, you promote us and yep. however many web registrants you get for us, I will guarantee you will get you more than that when we promote you. Yeah. yeah. Fair yeah. enough. So that allowed me with someone with a smaller list to yeah. know Josh Turner quite well uh, and to get referrals from him on the debrief and so on and so on and so on. So, yeah, so, cool. so yeah. start. And that's, that's really how you transition from what a lot of coaches are doing, which is the one-on-one, -on -one, they go to a business networking meeting, they go to a conference, go to a trade show, nothing wrong with that. If you like to go to those things, you should keep doing that. But that's yeah. how you transition from something that's irregular and kind of a bit random and unpredictable and one-on-one, -on -one, good quality when you get the leads, mm. but that's how you transition from that to scale. Yes, yeah, exactly right. And in terms of like what you cross promote, do you recommend that you always just cross promote like a good bit of content? Yeah. Um, versus, a, versus an offer for like their service. The, I think. It's the, the, yeah, it's a funny little thing, but the easiest thing when you start out to get a yes to in cross promotion is to, to have something that's the same medium as your partners. And webinars is a really good place to start. So yeah. if, if, if you've just been introduced to someone and they've got a webinar they want you to promote and you've got a webinar that you want them to promote, it's a very easy thing for people to say yes to. Yeah, yeah, correct. It gets, it's, it's what I call a one-step disconnect. When you have, say, a five-day challenge and someone else has a free book they want to promote, yeah, uh, it's slightly hard to get to yes for some weird reason. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would start, uh, the free book is terrific to have a, a free book, uh, but yeah. the, webinar, the webinar is the sweet spot because... If it's a free downloadable thing, people have got no, very little skin in the game. They've got a first name and an email address, and they're yep. not really signaling, signaling a serious intent to solve the problem that you can solve for them. Mm. 
That's one end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum is you email someone not with a, the free book offer, but the other end, which is here's the sales page, go ahead and buy. Yeah. So now, yeah, not yeah. many people are going to accept that offer before they've had a chance. But the webinar asks people to put an hour of their time as their skin in the game, and that flags that they are pretty serious about solving the problem. So you, yeah. I, you know, I would rather have ten webinar registrants than one hundred opt-ins for a free book. Yeah, because well, I'm more likely to make a sale from the 10 webinar registrants than I am from the 100 opt-ins. Yeah, that's the intent factor there, right? Yeah. Spin um, the game. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, thing with, <laughs> the thing with webinars, though, this is like working with a lot of coaches over the years because I, I love webinars and that's what I actually used to teach before the lead magnet opt-in is that when I tell a coach to like put together a webinar, it usually takes them like six months. So what I would, <laughs> what I would say right. is um like just being able to put together the presentations it takes them a long time so if you're going to do a webinar i think it's fine but put it together as quickly as possible don't think it has to be perfect particularly with warmer warmer traffic right like get, get just lay out your sales presentation keep it keep it simple have a really simple clear call to action to probably book a phone call in the first instance versus selling a product because that's a lot harder to do on the yep. webinar um because i know that webinars can for the, for the coach that's new or even in business for a couple of years can slow them down if they're not careful, like if they get bogged down in the weeds, if that makes sense. Sure, uh, but it's, I, think, I think it's fair to also add to that and say, if you want to scale your marketing, you've got to develop an asset to leverage off. Yeah, so absolutely. whether yeah. it's the five day challenge or book, even advertising, there's still an asset that has to be developed there to, yeah. you know, as part of the yeah. offer. Um, and webinars are, are a bit trickier. Um, but we'll give, at the end of the interview, we'll give someone a resource where they can go and they can get my 31 slides as a template and they can okay, awesome. start with that and that. might short certain things a little bit. Great, thank you for that. Um, now my next question is how do you, I mean, I think I know the answer to this, but I wanna ask you, um, how do you actually find like the the JV, uh, JV partners? Right, so, so, the, so what, the way I started is, is I figured out what the five characteristics were of a, of a, of a quality JV partner. Um, and I hired a freelancer, you know, seven bucks an hour from the Philippines. And I gave them, told them search two things. First of all, search for the word webinar, and you can change that for whatever free thing you're offering to partners, a free book or mm -hmm. five day challenge or whatever. But search for the word for webinar and search for the word bus phrase business. Search. Yep. And that will show you Pretty much everyone in the universe who's offering webinars to the same target market. Yeah, yeah. So that that's number that's the search. Then we want to we want to qualify them. Do they feature themselves on the website? Because if they're running a webinar to our target market, but they're a ten partner accountancy firm, they're not going to be a good partner. They're they're not going to get it. So they need to feature yeah. themselves on the website. They need to be targeting exactly the same market as us. Um, they need to be running webinars and appearing on podcasts. We know they're actively marketing already. Because the, yep. what, what, mark, what good marketing does is it puts an offer in front of someone who we're already confident is looking for that offer. We're not trying to convince someone that it would be a good idea to promote our webinar in exchange for us promoting their webinar. We're already, we want to find people already doing that. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's selling. It's convincing someone, and it's just too hard. Yep. So targeting the same target market, running webinars, appearing on podcasts, featuring themselves on the website, uh, we want to make sure they're not hyper BS uh, uh, people. So, you know, uh, whatever promotion they're doing, you know, how to make a million dollars next year, uh, even yeah. if you're broke or whatever. Eh, no, we don't want them. Um, yeah. So we have five, five knockout factors. And if they get a tick for each one of those, then we put them through a small algorithm. You don't have to do this. We have the algorithm. We develop it. But when you're starting out, you don't have to do it. And that algorithm predicts how many webinar registrants they're likely to generate. Yeah. So now we've, we've identified them, we've qualified them, and we've quantified them, and then we invite them onto our podcast. And the yep. reason we invite them onto the podcast is we, know they were, we already know they're appearing on podcasts. Remember, we wanted to give them an offer that they were already looking for. So the vast majority of them accept that invitation. If we simply emailed them and said, hey, look, I see you do webinars, we do webinars, do you want to talk about doing a swap? Mm -hmm. You don't get back mm -hmm. on them. Yeah. You, you've got to have a first date before you propose marriage. Yes. So exactly. the podcast is the first date. It's something we know that they're very, very confident they want to do. 
get them on the podcast. Seven questions in seven minutes. My podcast is pretty short. Uh, and after that, hey Luke, I, I see you doing webinars. Do you do you one point? Do you want to have a conversation about how we can grow each other's email lists? Yeah. Yep. And I know they want to have that conversation because I know they're already doing it. So at that point, yep. they lean forward, their eyes open, and they go, "Yeah, what do you got in mind?" Mm -hmm. I go, "Well, mm -hmm. I can tell. Like, is, you know, I don't normally mention I see you doing webinars first. That normally comes up." <laughs> You want to have a conversation about growing each other's email list? They go, yeah, what do you got in mind? I say, well, I see you do webinars. We do webinars. Maybe we can have a conversation about promoting each other's webinars. What do you think? And they go, yeah, hell yeah. So, and then we either figure something out on the spot or we book another time. The yep. dates are all organized by an assistant, but you can do that yourself. Um, just a little top tip here. Just run the one webinar a month. Don't do a webinar for each partner. Just one a month yep. and have multiple partners. They don't need to come and introduce you. You don't need to go and introduce them. Just yep. do the one webinar a month, multiple partners. Start with your objective is to have one webinar promotion for someone else's list a week in yep. reciprocation for them promoting you. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Uh, that's good. Good. Give a good um, overview of the strategy. Now, um, I'll ask. I've got two more questions. Um, number one: Is there any kind of um, big mistakes that you see coaches make with this? Um, specific strategy? Well, the biggest mistake with partners, mm. um, other than not doing the strategy, the biggest mistake is not. I just mean in, like, like in general, like the whole, the whole um, yeah. organic strategy, but yeah, it could be partners as well. So, so, so the biggest, there's, there's two parts to it. So I'll get, let me give you two, two bonus mistake. The biggest mistake people make with partners is not being fussy enough and making sure that they're in the sweet spot. Yeah. So they get people, you know, if, if let's say you're in business development, a personal development partner is not going to be a good partner for you. Okay. Yeah. You, you want, you want people marketing your webinar who are in the same wheelhouse as you, if you're personal development, you want people with personal development. There might be a different genre of personal development. Uh, you might, might be an emotional mastery person and they might be a goal setting person, but it's still personal development. That's the first yeah. mistake. People get people to promote them who are outside the wheelhouse and doesn't work for either list. Yeah. The next biggest mistake is doing the presentation, making it complicated. And you hit the nail on the head right at the start. Keep it simple. Mm. You literally need to have a 12 year old understand yeah, very true. the answer to the question, how does it all work? Yeah. Um, and if that 12 year old gets it, then you've made it simple enough. Yes. It's very, the, very good. You, you, yeah. You, yeah. If so, so there's a whole sequence right through, I call it a, a persuasion sequence, but when you get to the point where you go, let me show you how it all works with my clients. Mm. That's got to be no more than three steps. Yeah. Three steps, three parts, what, just three. And each of those is really simple. All you need at the end of that section of the presentation where you're explaining this is how it works is for people to go, I understand that. I think that would work quite well. Yeah. There might be 101 other things you actually do with your clients, yeah. but the enemy of motivation is complication. Yes. You will yes. you you will kill people's motivation if you complicate it. Yeah, you just need to, they just need to get it at a high level. Like that's it's that presentation. It's not a and this is what I, my biggest struggle in the beginning um, when doing webinars is that we because we love our subject, we want to like teach and we think by teaching we're adding yeah. value, but it just it just overwhelms them and and actually demotivates them from using <laughs> using your strategy. Yeah, um, it's, yeah, yeah. The big difference between a teaching or training webinar and a marketing webinar. Um, yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You need to have them understand explicitly that in order to implement everything that you've just shown them, they will need help. You will fail otherwise. It's not that simple. Yeah. It's a nice simple demonstration, but implementation is different. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, okay. Last question, Tom. Um, and I ask this to all of our guests. Uh, so you're standing at the top of a mountain and there's thousands of coaches below you. You can only shout one message for them to become successful. What is that one message? Pick a strategy and persist. Yep. You, you might be a content strategy. You, it might be a paid advertising strategy. It might be a networking strategy. Just sit down, figure out what makes sense for you with your personality and your market and stick with that until you get it working. 
You, mm. you can try out a little bits and pieces on the side if you want to, but stick with that strategy. Set yourself a KPI every week. Uh, when I started, it was one new partner onboarded each week. Uh, simple KPI, hit that, get a habit of hitting that every single week and persist until you make it work. Uh, yep. Nothing works until it works. You, you, Absolutely. You, we've got to understand that, that if you're going to try something new, you're going to fail at it. It's not going to be perfect, but you'll continue to fine tune. Actually, that reminds me of a um, uh, something a friend um, said to me is like, you know, a, 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 bro a new funnel won't fix a broken message, right? So I think a lot of coaches, we think that by changing the, the strategy or the funnel or whatever to get clients, that that's going to be the thing that, that actually now enables us to get more clients when really our message is broken and we need to just stick, just pick a strategy I just said that, stick, that works with your personality because some people would love to do webinars some people would rather do whatever a book funnel or whatever the strategy is right so yeah. um yeah. pick the strategy because in reality they all work for everyone um but just like pick one that you like and stick with it because if it's not converting it's not the funnel it's the it's the message within that funnel exactly so that's exactly you're, you're either you either don't have it in front of the right people or you have the wrong message. It's one of those two yeah, things. Yeah, exactly right. Which is correct. Cool. Um, thanks for that, Tom. Great interview. And I knew this was going to be super valuable. Um, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing like the specifics of your system. Um, now, where can um, the co coaches listening to go to learn more about you and your strategy? They, they can go to our website, which is leadsology.com. Leadsology as in, I don't know, psychology, but it's leads. Um, but but they want to, they probably want to head over to gettomsfreebook.com, gettomsfreebook.com. Yep. They can get a copy of my marketing webinars book. And the reason they should get that is twofold. First of all, once they've got the book, they'll get a link, which gives them access to my PowerPoint deck, that I use for presentations, it gives them the yep. templates, gives them all sorts of things, lots of free stuff they can get once they've got the book. They'll also yep. get an invitation to one of our webinars and that's oh, where they cool. can see me in action going through everything that's in the book. Yep. Okay, cool. So that's gettomsfreebook.com. Yep. And they'll get a PDF version of my best-selling Amazon book marketing with webinars. Okay, perfect. So, all right. So go to get Tom's free book um dot com get tom's free book dot com go check out his book and jump on his on his live webinar as well uh, when he promotes that um tom thank you for uh as i said coming on giving up the time and sharing your uh your strategy um with us and our community thanks for the opportunity luke cheers everyone see you everyone see you next